Some of you had asked us about our solar system and here it is. In this video, we are going to talk about what a solar system is, what are the different components of a solar system, what do they mean by feed-in tariffs, what solar system that we have got installed, and we are also going to talk a little bit on return on investments and how that ties in with the solar system that we are using. Finally, we are also going to touch lightly upon batteries and some of the risks and pitfalls that you need to be aware of before installing one. A solar system basically helps us generate our own energy and save on energy bills. There are three main or three essential components to a solar system. The solar panels, the inverters and the racking system or the mounting system. So the solar panels are the panels that sit on the top of the roof and the solar panels collect the energy from the sun and convert it into direct current. The inverters are the small box type things that sit on the side of the house that receives this direct current from the solar panels and convert it into AC which is then being used by all the household appliances. The third one is the racking system uh, which is used to hold or mount the solar panels on the top of the roof. In, in terms of the inverters, we have two different kinds of inverters. One is the string inverter and the other one is the micro inverter. In a string inverter system, you have all the solar panels connected in a series and the end of the panel gets connected to one inverter at the side of the house. Uh, in a micro inverter system, you have micro inverters in each and every panel and all of them directly connect to the central inverter or the uh, inverter that sits at the side of the house. String inverters are cheaper, micro inverters are a little expensive because each and every panel has its own micro inverter. And the other thing is in a string inverter, let's say if one of the panel stops working due to a partial shade or a faulty panel, the whole system uh, stops working or the performance of the system goes down completely. In a micro inverter situation, since every panel has its own inverter, if one panel gets damaged or if one panel receives shade, all the other panels, you know, they work independently and they work to their full capacity. So these are some of the differences that you need to be wary of when determining the kind of inverters that you want for your house. The fourth component is battery and it is optional. Now let's talk about the solar system that we have installed. We have installed a 9.9 .9 kilowatt solar system and for the panels we have Trina Vertex S Plus and for the inverters we have uh, Enphase Micro Inverters. The entire cost of the system was about approximately $10,500 and according to Solar Quotes, the average cost for a 9.9 .9 .9 or 10 kilowatt system in Sydney is anywhere from $8,000 to $13,000. This depends on the brand of the solar panels and of course the brand of the inverters. In this section, we are going to talk about how solar works in Australia just to give you a general idea of stuff. So in a solar system, once energy gets generated through solar, the house first uses it. Let's say if you have your AC on during the day or if you have your washing machine or any of the electronic items running, it is going to directly feed in from the energy that is uh, generated through the solar system and any excess energy that is not being utilized that gets fed into the main grid. I'm just going to reiterate solar generates energy and the energy first gets used by us whatever is running at that point in time and if it generates more energy than what we are using the extra energy gets fed into the main grid and for every kilowatt hour of energy that we feed to our main grid we get paid a certain amount this is called feed-in tariff or FIT in simple terms so we are with Energy Australia uh, under a plan called the Flexi Home Plan and currently we pay about 37.7 cents per kilowatt hour for energy that we use from Energy Australia, not from solar, from Energy Australia. And every kilowatt hour of energy that we feed into Energy Australia, the excess energy that we get from a solar system, if we feed that back to Energy Australia's grid, we get paid 5 cents. Again, to reiterate, we pay 37.7 cents for every kilowatt hour of energy that we use. But if we give them back one kilowatt hour, we get paid five cents. So using your solar is worth eight times more than exporting it. Now that we have a basic understanding on what a solar system is, what are the components of a solar system, how solar works in Australia, let's talk some numbers. 
So the annual average for a 10 kilowatt solar system in Sydney is, is roughly 39 to 40 kilowatts. In summers, it may be higher. In winters, it may be lower, but that's the annual average. Something for you to consider if you already have a solar installed, this could be a good reference point for you. The next is return on investment and payback. Let's talk some actual numbers here. So we have installed our solar system back in September 2024 and we are in August right now. So we are almost a year. So we have good amount of data to compare and see how good the solar system has performed and what the return on investment is like. I'm going to put some numbers on the screen for you to see. So the cost of our solar system is about $10,500 as I said and uh, based on the numbers that we have, the annual production is about 12,000 kilowatt hours or 12 megawatts. So let's say if we consume 20% of everything, this is again a conservative number. Let's say we consume 20% of the solar energy that we produce, which means 80% of it goes back to the grid and we get paid 5 cents. Based on the numbers that we have for self-use, that would be about 2,400 kilowatts times 37.7, which is what we get charged from Energy Australia. That gives us about $911. And the export would be about 9,671 kilowatts. That's the 80% times 5 cents, which would be $484. So the annual benefit from using a solar system is 1,395, which is nothing but the $911 that you know we used worth of energy that we used, we did not get from the grid and we exported and thereby saved $484 in credit. So that comes to an annual benefit of $1,395. So the payback for a $10,095 system would be 7.2 years. On the other hand, if the consumption goes to 35%, let's say we use 35% of the energy that we produce from our solar, the payback would be 5.1 years. And if it's 50%, let's say we run a lot of the household electronic items during the day, the washing machine, the dishwasher run during the day, we are very conscious about using our solar and every bright sunny day that we get, we are going to use all these things. So that would then give us a payback in 3.9 years. Realistically, most homes in Sydney sit about 30 to 40 percentage of consumption and thereby the, the payback would be roughly in four to six years for a 10 kilowatt system that I've invested in. Maybe if you get something for a better price, your payback would be sooner. So once your system is paid back, every bit of energy that your system generates is basically free power. Here's what you need to be mindful about when you're investing in a solar system. The longevity of the system is really important. If you think about short term or if you think about saving money in the short term, remember that solar systems that are built for quality will last for 25 30 years with no problem so spending that initial bit of money is going to save you a lot of hassle and after five years or seven years down the line once your system is paid off you want your solar system to work for the next 10 years 20 years or something like that and you also want to trust or you want an installer that supports you for the lifetime of the solar system so these are some things that you will have to consider before investing in your solar in this section, we are going to talk about bills and savings. In the last section, we talked about return on investment and payback. And we did some calculation with, with conservative numbers like 20% utilization or 35% and 50% respectively. Keeping that in mind, let's say if the uh, consumption of uh, solar is at 20%, the amount that we would have saved is 1,395 or just to keep it simple, $1,400 annually. So once the solar system is paid back, let's say in seven years. After year seven, if your consumption is still at 20%, this is the amount that you would save from your energy bills. If your consumption is at 35%, you would save roughly $2,000 annually and the number keeps increasing. And if you also add things like batteries and stuff, you're going to, your savings are only going to increase. So this is actually a very good investment. And always think about long term when you're investing in solar you need a good installer you need good panels you need good inverters and a very good racking system so that it holds the entire solar system together batteries are actually great for storing solar energy for night use but at today's prices they add about 5k to 10k per battery and it could add about 6 to 10 years of payback 
For our system, we don't have a battery, but we have ensured that our system is battery ready so that in the future, if we decide to install one, it's easy. That is something that you can consider before you install a solar system. Make sure that your solar system is future proof or battery ready in case you need one. When we started this journey, like back in September 2024, the feed-in tariffs from Energy Australia was at around 7 cents and now they have reduced it to 5 cents. And there is a lot of talk about reducing feed-in tariffs or even export charges. What I mean by that is for every kilowatt hour of energy that we export, we may have to pay. Ultimately, what the government is doing is they are asking us to use our solar rather than sending it back to the grid. Using it, you're saving 37.7 cents of every kilowatt that you use. You send it back to the grid, you get 5 cents. So. That's basically eight times worth. If you are in Australia, don't chase for the cheapest system. Chase for the system that has quality, warranty, and the reputation of the installer. And if you've already installed solar, let us know in the comments what your solar system is, what worked for you, and what didn't work for you. Let's make this a real resource for people considering solar. I'll see you in another one. Bye.